The arithmetic sequence AI is defined by the formula AI is equal to AI minus 1 plus 3 where the first term is given to us as negative 24. So this means that ith term in this sequence can be given by the sum of the term previous to the ith term and 3. For example, if we take i equals to 2, so the second term in the sequence can be given as sum of the first term and 3. Now the first term is already given to us as negative 24. So the second term would come out to be negative 24 plus 3 which is negative 21. Similarly, let's take another example. If i is equal to 3, that means the third term in the sequence can be given as sum of the second term and 3. And we just found out how much the second term is. This is equal to negative 21. So negative 21 plus 3 is negative 18. So using this, we can figure out the value of any term of the sequence. Now let's see what do we need to find out. Find n if the sum of the first n terms is negative 105. So let's see, we are given an arithmetic sequence, we are given the sum of first n terms of the sequence and we need to figure out the number of terms in this sequence. Now, as we have already seen in the previous videos, sum of the first n terms of an arithmetic sequence can be given by the average of the first and the nth term in the sequence times the number of terms in that sequence. So using this, let's try to figure out how many terms our sequence has. So let's think about what do we know in this equation and what do we need to find out in order to evaluate n. So we are already given the sum of the first n terms. So we know what Sn is. The first term is given to us as negative 24. So we know about this. What we don't know is what is the nth term of the sequence. So let's try and figure out what An is. So to figure out An, let's quickly write our sequence. The first term is negative 24, then second is negative 21, negative 18. And this goes on till we get to our nth term. Now as we can see that between any two consecutive terms, the common difference is always 3. In other words, I can say to get to the second term, I am adding the common difference once to our first term. To get to my third term, I am adding this common difference twice to my first term. Similarly, if we keep on following this pattern, to get to our nth term, I'll have to add my common difference n n minus 1 times to my first term. So now, if you go ahead and replace this expression for a n in this equation over here, you'll get your old school formula, which is something as s n is equal to n by 2 times 2 a 1 plus n minus 1 d, which is nothing but just another way to write this whole thing. So you can either do that or we can just simplify a n over here. Now a1 is given to us as negative 24, n is something that we are still figuring out and d is 3. So let's simplify this expression. I'll distribute 3 over n and negative 1. So this would become negative 24 plus 3 n minus 3. And on simplifying this, we'll get a n equals to 3 n minus 27. Now we have figured out the logic behind this problem. All you need to do is simplify this whole thing. So why don't you pause this video and give it a go. Now let's go ahead and substitute this value of a n in this equation over here. So doing that, s n is already given to us as negative 105. I'll write that instead of s n. And then a1 is negative 24. a n is something that we just found out. I'll write 3n minus 27 as a n and this whole thing divided by 2 times n. Now we have an expression in which there's just one variable n. So let's go ahead and simplify this whole thing. So in the numerator, negative 24 and negative 27 add up to negative 51. So I can rewrite this numerator as 3n minus 51. 
and also I can see a three common in both these terms. So probably I can pull that out too. So I'll write this term as three times n minus seventeen. Now on multiplying two on both sides of this equation, I'll have one hundred and five times two on the left hand side, and three times n minus seventeen times n on the right hand side. So on dividing both sides of this equation by three, on the left hand side. 3 goes into 105 exactly 35 times so over here we have negative 35 times 2 which is negative 70 and on the right hand side 3 goes into 3 ones and this can be rewritten as n squared minus 17n looks like we are getting ourselves a quadratic equation all right so let's add 70 on both sides of this equation and then we'll have n squared Minus seventeen n plus seventy equals to zero. So let's try to find out what n should be. So let me just make some space on the screen. So we'll use factorization to solve this quadratic equation. I can write seventy as ten times seven. So this equation can be rewritten as n squared minus ten n minus seven n. Now these two things add up to negative seventeen n, and then we have plus seventy equals to zero. So we'll consider these two terms and these two terms at a time. So from this term we have we can take n as common, and we'll be left with n minus ten. And from this term over here we can take out seven as common, and we'll be left with n minus ten again. So now. In these two terms, we have n minus ten as common, so I can rewrite this as n minus ten times n minus seven is equal to zero. So this means either n minus ten is zero or n minus seven is zero. So we can say n is either equal to ten or n is equal to seven. So this means let me get my question back up here. Let me also delete some stuff from here so we can create some space. Now, n comes out to be seven and ten, meaning if we take the sum of first seven terms of the sequence, we'll get negative hundred and five. Also, if we take the sum of first ten terms of the sequence, we'll again get negative hundred and five. So, how's this possible? This could only mean one thing. That the sum of eighth, ninth, and tenth terms should be zero. To understand what I'm saying, let's just figure out our seventh term. So the seventh term can be found out using this expression. So seventh term would be three times seven minus twenty-seven. So three times seven is twenty-one. So twenty-one minus twenty-seven, which is minus six. So our seventh term is negative six. So beginning with the seventh term, let's figure out our eighth term. So I'll just write a seven below it, and a eighth. Our eighth term would be negative six plus three, which is negative three. Then our ninth term would be negative three plus three, which is zero, and the tenth term would be zero plus three, which is three. So we can see from here that eighth, ninth, and tenth term add up to a zero. So this is why we can say that either the sum of seven terms in the sequence is negative hundred and five, or sum of the first ten terms in this series is negative hundred and five.